for me? Yeah, let us understand what is Development Control Rules 2034. The Municipal Corporation of Greater Mumbai is coming out with the latest Development Control Rules 2014 to 2034, that is for the period of 20 years. And also, along with the Development Control Rules, is also published Development Plan. Now, the 25th February 2015, this has been published for getting the comments, suggestions from the public at large. This proposed Development Control Rules 2034 as well as Development Plan 2034 has been kept open for the public for the next 30 days from 25th February 2015 to 25th April 2015 for nearly 60 days it has been kept open for the public for giving their suggestion and objection. Now in order to give the suggestion and objection what are the changes proposed in the development control rules we should understand. So therefore I have made an attempt to give you the entire overview as to what are the changes that is proposed in the new development control rules. Now when we cover this, we will be covering about the four aspects basically in the next half an hour. One, what is the reservation? See whenever the development plan comes, so that any municipal corporation which is called a local authority, they try to give us what are the reservation. When we say reservation, the reservation for garden, it could be reservation for road, it could be reservation for maternity, reservation for school, reservation for hospital, various things which is required in a developed city. Unless until the reservation is kept, those amenities will not come in the city. Therefore, when the development plan is going to be proposed for the next 20 years, so where are the schools proposed, where the hotels are proposed, where the amenity spaces are proposed, this will be given in the developed rules. So when it is resolved, for the residential use, commercial use or industrial use or any other use as I said open space, garden or playground or the hospital, it will be used only for that purpose. So the owner cannot use for other than what has been proposed in the plan, that is the development plan. So we will discuss about what are the reservation proposed and where it is proposed. When we say reservation, naturally there are various housing societies, there are various buildings which are going to get affected. So there may be a building today, it is proposed as an open space. If there is a road winding, then the building when they go for redevelopment, they have to take inside. So there are a lot of issues which are going to affect. So what are these reservations? Secondly, DP road, that is development plan road. Once it is proposed as a development plan road, you have to leave it for the proposed road. So there are a lot of new roads which are proposed and the existing roads are also proposed to be widened. So which are this and what will be the implication of that? Second we are talking about FSI zone. In the Nauna plan, they have also proposed the FSI zone. FSI means floor space index. In a plot of land, if there is one FSI or rather one square foot of the land, or one meter of the land, how much building can be constructed? What is the construction possible? That is called FSI, floor space index. Suppose, as on today, in the suburb, the FSI norm, that is called base FSI, is 1. When I say base FSI is 1, which means if there is 1 square meter of the land, naturally 1 square meter of the built up area is possible. Similarly, if the FSI in suburb, that is sorry, in city it is 1.33 which means if there is one square meter of the land on which 1.33 square meter of the build up can be constructed. So this way the FSI zone is there. So now in the proposed new plan what they are proposing is there is a zone for 0.1 FSI, there is a zone for 3.0 FSI, 3.5 FSI, there is a zone for 5 FSI, there is a zone for 6.5 FSI, there is a zone for 8 FSI. Wherever the 
there is a congestion where there is more uh, you know frequent requirement is there then the FSI of 8 is given as in is one square meter of the land now the government is proposing 8 square meter to be constructed so earlier it was one square meter to be constructed now they are proposing 8 square meter to be constructed so what are the implications is it a good thing or is it a bad thing and if it is a good thing how it is good if it is a bad thing how it is bad and when we compare with the old development control rule of 1991 old dcr is 1991 now in the year 2014 the new dc rule has been proposed so in comparison the old development control rule in the new development control rule what are the changes that we'll discuss as far as fsi is concerned road width so now the road width compared to the road width the building will be allowed to be constructed in other words if the road is more width is better then the more height is permitted if the road width is small it is less then the high rise building is not permitted so the rise of the building is in comparison with the road width earlier in the dc rule it was not so so therefore now when the proposed fsi is given it also depends on the road width so how the height of the building will be compared so the height of building will be discussed so these are the four things which we will discuss so let us start with the first one scope of permission now if you see in the old development control rule for any concession we were required to go to the municipal commissioner what are the normal concession granted by the municipal commission the one and most important concession which is normally given by the municipal commissioner whenever a proposal is given is the open space deficiency what we mean is open space deficiency suppose in the old development control rule if the height of the building let us say is 9 meter so at least two third of that let us say should be kept open so suppose height of the building is 9 meter then two third means 6 meter should be kept open two third is 6 meter that should be kept open and suppose two third is not possible to be kept open for some reason because the FSI is not permitted or there is a lot of you know uh, road width has gone so two third is not possible in that case we could go to the municipal commissioner and tell him that this much open space is not possible to be left what we can do is one third so that means instead of two third open space deficiency where out of nine meter we have to leave six meter open we will say only six meter instead of six meter we will keep only three meter open which means three meter you are not keeping it open so that means you are going to ask the concession from the municipal commission when you are asking this concession it will go to the municipal commission municipal commissioner will grant the concession if he is satisfied and then he charges premium whatever is the ready record on that area of that 25 percent of the ready record value for the open space deficiency which is granted will be charged as the premium which means every proposal there is a lot of concession given and because the concession given 25 percent of the ready reckoner is taken as the premium for giving this open space deficiency and the BMC earns the income with this every building which is getting developed in suburb or in the city that would go to the BMC commission for the approval of the open space deficiency and to pay the premium this way the proposal used to get delayed because when it is to go to the BMC commissioner highest authority naturally from the you know, proposal when the plan is put up for approval from the assistant engineer then junior engineer or maybe you know the development uh, deputy engineer building proposal the chief engineer then it goes to the municipal commission so this is a hierarchy so when it goes to such a hierarchy it takes its own time so it would take at least six months one year to get the approval from the bmc commission 
for this now in the new development control rule this open space deficiency granting of the concession has been done away with that means now no more concession if you see the concession for open space deficiency will not be given what is there in the development control rule you have to follow so therefore if the government says 6 meter has to be left open you have to leave 6 meter if it says 9 meter has to be kept open 9 meter has to be kept open you cannot say that now i cannot obtain 9 meter therefore you give me the concession that is not permitted so the concession of open space deficiency is not permitted this is one secondly is parking earlier as per the development control rule if the parking is required let us say 10 and because the plot is size is small and for some reason we cannot give the parking we could go to the municipal commission and again take the parking concession now that is also not done away with that means now if the parking what is required under the development control rules you have to provide you cannot say that we will not give the parking because of so and so reason no so whatever is permitted whatever is required minimum required under the development control rule to have a parking for a particular building that has to be granted no concession so that means the discretionary powers which was there with the bmc commissioner has been taken away one for the deficiency of the parking second is marginal open space deficiency and the third is proposal cannot have any concession in this aspect in the proposed development so no concession of whatsoever can be taken and the file can go to the bmc committee with this what happens the time which otherwise taken for the approval and concession and all that will be now saved and reduced and discretion of power so now everybody knows what is there in that development control second the most important is uniform fsi now under the old development control rules depending on the type of development that we are doing the different fsi was granted i have explained you what is fsi floor space index so now when we go ahead with the 33 5 which means mada redevelopment in the mada redevelopment there was 2.5 fsi 2.5 fsi then there is a 3 fsi and if the plot is you know having a layout plot and that proportion of psi that means it can go up to 4 4.5 also under the mada layout whereas now there is nothing like that whether it is a 335 mada redevelopment whether it is a sri redevelopment under 3310 whether it is cess building redevelopment in city 337 or the cluster development under 339 of the world now everything will have the same uniform psi in other words earlier if it is a private building then different fsi 1.33 1.33 is fsi out of which one is a free fsi 0.33 you have to pay the premium in sub then 0.67 you have to purchase the tdr from the market and 0.35 fungible fsi free of fsi for the existing tenants 0.35 fungible fsi to be purchased from the bmc by paying 60% of the ready equipment value like this 2.7 fsi was there in sub for a private building if it is a mada building then it is a 3 fsi if it is a cess building in city then you have another 2.5 fsi or if it is a otherwise it is 3 fsi then if it is a cluster development there is a 4 fsi and if it is a cess building where the incentive fsi is granted then there is no limit of the fsi it can be 6 7 8 also because existing tenants you construct under 33 7 that says building and whatever you construct for the existing tenants and give them as a ownership 50% of that you get as a construction possible and that would go up to 4 5 fsi so this way depending on the land depending on the building the different type of fsi was granted now there is nothing like that whatever is the type of the land whatever is the construction that is doing whether you are doing under sra slum redevelopment whether you are doing a mara repair board redevelopment under you know cess building 
whether you are doing under a cluster development, whether it is a collector land, whether it is a you know private land. And secondly, all will have the same FSI. Secondly, earlier, if it is a suburb, the FSI was you know nearly 2.7, whereas in city it was 1.33. So there was little FSI in city as well as suburb. Now that is also done away with. Now everywhere the uniform FSI is granted, but depending on the zone, now it is not depending on the type of land, but it will be depending on the zone. When I say zone, near the railway station, Andheri, where you are sitting today, Laram Center, here we have 8 FSI. Whereas little extended, where there is 6.5 FSI. Then little inside, then 5 FSI. And majority area, more than 58% of the total, this one, nearly about 3.5 FSI. So this way the FSI is granted. Second problem in the earlier, the FSI. Whereas there is a staircase, there is a lift area, there is a meter room, there is a water tank, there is a society office and then 2% of the total built up area is given as the gym and amenity areas. Okay. Those were free of FSI. Or at least sometimes you pay the premium, nominal premium, you would get the those FSI and it was not part of the sanctioned FSI, permitted FSI. This was in addition to this. So even if there was a in suburb 2.7 FSI, nearly one in the form of built up area, society room, in the staircase, lift area, meter room and even your water tank, all this you would have got as an additional area which means it would have been 2.7 plus 1, that means it would have been 3.7. Whereas, those area, the nominal 10% of the ready regular value, you are required to pay as a premium. Whereas, under the new development control rule, there is nothing called free. So, everything is going to be a part of FSI. So, even lift area is a part of FSI, staircase is lift up FSI, Society office is also part of FSI. That means now, though the government says it is going to be 3.5 FSI, virtually, in actual practice, it will be less than 2.5, which otherwise would have been 2.7. The second is the premium that they are going to charge is also very big. So, therefore, the uniform FSI, which was otherwise there, has been now they have made a uniform FSI. Earlier it was a discretion FSI for different type. It is done away with. And the FSI for open space and other thing which was otherwise available. Okay. For having this staircase and all. That is not going to be there now. Everything is a part of. With this what happens? The implication. Now elevation log nahi karein. There will not be elevation. There will not be you know. Uh, the staircase everything will be very much narrow. The societies may not get the. Society office room, because if it is a part of the society office room, then it is a part of FSI. Water tank also will be very narrow, because even water tank construction is going to be a part of the FSI. So nothing which is constructed, even let us say gym and other things, what is and they, they are all going to be a part of the FSI. So therefore, now the builder or the construction which you are doing, they will be very cautious. And this way, the uniform FSI has been given. Third, which is what we are talking about, is the rationalization according to the height of the building, open space. Now, as I told you earlier, the open space was in relation to the building. Okay. And in relation to the building, open space within the compound. Now, if there is no open space, you go to the BMC commissioner and take the concession. And you pay the open space deficiency charges. Now, it is not so. Now, everything has been done that open space regulation is done uniform and how it is done? Rationalized according to the height of the building. So, it is rationalized according to the height of the building. Whatever is the height of the building, in proportion to that, there has to be open space. Secondly, one more category to be introduced between 30 and 70 meter. Earlier, 30 meter and 70 meter was there. Now, they have introduced 30, 50 and 70 meter with open space of 4.5 meters on all sides. So that means 
Now there has to be minimum 4.5 meter <coughs> open space deficiency across the building. So on four side of the building there has to be 4.5 meter minimum minimum open space. Okay. So this way there is a 30 meter, there is a 70 meters and then another meter 50 meter with the open space of 4.5 meter on all side. So this is how it is done. Now the zone, the entire line with where the construction is possible again is divided into different zones. Which are the zones? As I told you, the development plan gives us which land can be used for what purpose. So they have divided into few zones. Let us understand the zones. The first zone is called residential commercial zone. When I say residential commercial zone means residence is going to be the dominant use. The maximum area in that area, in that plot, let us say this is a residential commercial zone, which means the maximum area should be of residence and less will be commercial. So commercial permit as specified. Now which are the commercial possible? Possibly office or convenient shopping. When we say convenient shopping, the like consumer store, consumer durable, banks, okay. These are the various things which are permitted. So one is residential commercial zone. Second zone which is permitted is called or which has been marked is a CR zone. When I say CR, it means commercial residential zone. The earlier ones, RC zone. RC zone means residential commercial zone. The second one is CR zone. When we say CR zone, CR zone commercial residential zone. Where the activity of commercial is more. The entire building could be commercial. Like you know, we have Nariman point. Where the dominant use is commercial. BKC, Bandra Kurla complex, where the dominant is used commercial. So this way, the commercial residential zone. So this way, where the commercial is more. Commercial residential, certain manufacturing uses are permitted. Like dye making, some small, small, you know, offices where manufacturing, printing press. That is also manufacturing. Okay, you are printing. So certain service activities, manufacturing activities are permitted in the commercial zone. Not only shop or offices, even certain manufacturing, small scale offices are permitted, not a big scale. Like let us say you are making a jewelry, diamond cutting. It is a manufacturing. You are making a jewelry manufacturer. Okay, that is a manufacturing. So shoe making is a manufacturing. So certain things where you know it is permitted, like tailoring, ready-made garments, it is a manufacturing. So these things will be permitted even in the commercial zone. Third is where industrial zone, third zone, I zone. Now here manufacturing is the primary activity. Like big big industries, okay, where there is uh, chemical industries, where there can be big, you know, making of the big uh, uh, manufacturing units, okay. So manufacturing is permitted, warehousing is permitted, logistic is permitted. All industrial activity of non-polluting, polluting is not permitted, non-polluting, where big big industries you are putting, let us say power loom, which is not having a power loom, you understand, textile power loom, where a lot of looms are put, okay, the manufacturing takes place. So it is a big industry, tailoring or ready-made garment when you do tailoring, that could be a manufacturing activity, but it is not an industrial activity. It's a homemade cottage industry. Thing. Whereas power loom you put 15, 20, 50, 100 power loom where you know lot of cloth is being manufactured. So this becomes an industrial zone. So industry you understand heavy industries. Conversion of land use permitted as specified. Now suppose there is an industrial zone. There you want to convert into residential. Yes, it is permitted for a specified purpose. Suppose industrial workers for the purpose of industrial worker. So you want to have one residential building, quarters. So that is permitted. So that will be specified in this. And the fourth is, the zone is, early no development zone. Now they have called it as a NA zone. NA zone means natural zone. When we say natural zone, means like, let us say there is a 
river. Can you do anything in the river? There is a creek. Can you do anything? There is a sea. There is a, you know, certain area which is marked as a natural zone. Let us say forest, which is permitted as a only forest. So in the forest, it is demarcated as a forest, then you cannot do any industrial activity. So that's a natural. So this way, so if there is a river, if there is a something, so this way, natural zone are given. So no development is possible in these zones. You understand? So near the seashore, that is a no zone. So CRZ, earlier it was called CRZ, now they have called it as a natural zone. Now, let me give you some example of mixed use permitted. Now what happens is, let us say how the mixed use is permitted. Mixed use means what? Where there is a residential as well as commercial. commercial. Where there is a industrial as well as manufacturing and office. Where there is a industry as well as residential. So these are mixed use are permitted as I was saying. So it is permitted. No doubt dominant use is that but mixed use is permitted. Now how it is permitted? Offices to be permitted in residential commercial. I told you offices to be permitted in residential commercial zone. But the dominant use is residential. Commercial is a very new few area. So that is permitted. So and CR zone. CR zone means what? Commercially residential zone. So in the commercially residential where commercial aspect is there, then also part of the residence is permitted. Only restriction is the width of the road. This can be on independent plot. Now the restriction is the width of the plot. Depending on the width of the plot, certain use is permitted, certain use is not. What is width of the road? We will see in the next class or in the next session. But let us understand that it can be independent plot. When you say independent plot, the plot which is independent. Now this is an independent plot, which means it is a standalone plot. That is an independent plot. There can be independent building also. In the independent plot, let us say this is an independent plot. In this independent plot of let us say 2 acres, it is an independent plot. Okay. In this independent plot means standalone plot, there can be 3 independent building. You understand independent building means without having any connection. So there can be independent building. So independent building is there. So what is the width to be given? What is the use to be given? Third is separate wing with separate access. So it is also permitted separate wing with a separate access. Let us say there is a residential complex. In that there has to be let us say one office building or office use. Can one wing be office? Answer is yes. But office with a separate access. That means residential access has to be separate and commercial access has to be separate. So this way, separate wing with separate access. If there is a separate wing, let us say one independent building with three wings. A and B wing could be having access for residence and C wing independent access for the commercial. So there has to be commercial. Next is, minimum width of the street on which the plot abuts should be 12.20 meters. So whenever this mixed use is permitted, then minimum width of the street on which plot abuts should be 12.20 meters. So this is very important. Let us take example 2. Example 2 is restaurant can be permitted on independent plot. If there is an independent plot, independent building, independent hotel can be permitted. Second, independent building also of the possible. Suppose there is a plot in that there are three buildings. Two buildings can be residence, one building, independent building can be hotel, restaurant. Third, separate wing with a separate access. Let us say there are three wings. In one wing you want to give the hotel. Okay, give one wing hotel. Remaining two wings you will have a commercial, sorry, residential. So this way. Then separate floor with a separate access. Suppose you have a building with seven floors. So first floor and second floor you want to give it to the, let us say, restaurant or a hospital. It will have a separate access. Now as far as third floor onwards is concerned, let us say it is a residence, then there will be separate 
Access. Access. So there will be two staircase. One staircase for one and second. Third staircase directly goes to the third. And the lift also is like that. So separate access. Ground floor with a separate access possible. Top of the podium. If there is a podium and top of the podium also can be there for the restaurant. Then above steel floor, if there is a steel floor, ground floor there is a steel. Steel means which is open for the purpose of car parking. So uppermost parking floor with a separate access. So after the steel is over, then there are two floors, let us say. That is given for restaurant, that is possible. Given for a hospital, that is possible. But it should have a separate access. One terrace in non-residential building, open terrace in non-residential building. Open terrace is also possible in the open terrace. So in non-residential building. Minimum width of the street on which the plot above should be, as I said, 12.20 meter has to be minimum. This way, the mixed use is possible. Now, list of tables and figures are also given. There are list of tables and figures. Geographical, geographical, graphical representation, user friendly. That means, the drawings are made in such a way Graphic, graphic is made in such a way that if you will know where is and colorful, the plants are made colorful so that graphics is shown. Because of the graphics, one can understand what for this particular color is given, what for this graphic is given, what for this identity is given. If there is a dotted dotted line, that means it shows that it is a boundary. If there is a railway mark with XXX or plus 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 that means it is a railway so graphics are shown which of course we will see in the next podium parking is allowed now podium parking is allowed new regulations added design for physically challenged people the people which who are differently able differently able means means earlier we used to call them as disabled handicapped no they are able they are able to do the work but they are able to do in a different way so Differently able person, differently able person, so these are physically challenged people, they will have a particular design of the toilet or other things, building. Environment sustainability, because most important is environment and sustainability. So if there is no environment sustainability, we cannot survive. So there has to be sufficient air, there should be sufficient open space, there has to be, you know, tree, everything put, otherwise there can be issues. So, you know, global warming and lot of uh, tragedy has happened because you are not taking care of the environment. If you are not taking care of the environment, the environment will be very angry with you, then ultimately the mishap happens. What happened on, you know, 26th uh, July 2005, which you, many of us are available in Mumbai. So, where the, you know, environment was not taken carefully. Similarly, SDCR for streetscapes. SDCR means Special Development Special Development Control Regulation. Special Development Control Regulation. DCR means Development Control Regulation. So, here Special. Special Development Control Rule for Street Scabs. Special Development Control Rule for Slums. Special Development Control Rules for, you know, Mada Building. So, these are various Special development control rules are also given and it is also there for state scaps. Then IOD. No deemed provision for IOD, OCCC, FCCC, BCCC. Which means IOD means intimation of disapproval. There is no deemed permission. Abhi, aap, aap din, you, know, you have applied after 60 days, it is deemed to have been granted. No, no such provision. Then OCCC. OCC means Occupation Certificate. Similarly, FCCC, that is full completion certificate, okay. Then BCCC, building completion certificate and revalidation. <coughs> Suppose IOD, once IOD is given, that means intimation of disapproval, once the permission is given for construction, within one year, okay, so that should be done. So, so there is no permission which is now available, no deemed permission for this, no deemed permission for revalidation also, you have to go on getting new revalidation. It is not that you get the deemed permission. So these are the things. 6.13 the regulation, new one. 
housing regulatory authority hra now everywhere in maharashtra maharashtra housing regulation and development act 2012 is already enacted then housing appellate tribunal is also given so if there is a housing regulatory authority and housing tribunal uh, appellate authority the development to be regulated access to hra and that means development will be regulated according to hra housing regulatory authority and housing appellate authority the authority according to them only housing has to be constructed deemed revocation not notice is to be given to the applicant suppose deemed revocation if there is certain thing where the government decides comes out with a certain regulation that here is the place where the residence is to be converted to let us say open room so in that case deemed revocation certain things is given deemed revocation in that case after certain period it is deemed to have been revoked and the provision is made in that case there is no need of giving separate notice to the land owner and get the things done so this way there are so many other things which we will discuss in the next session so with this the new development control rules proposed development control rules comes up with lot of restrictions lot of issues lot of good things lot of bad things and change always brings lot of resistance therefore i am of the opinion you should go through this development control rules you should go through the development control plan understand and then meet our association maharashtra society welfare association and affordable housing welfare organization of india we have made up a decision that we will go to the localities and localities if they invite us we will go and explain them about the, their areas problems and how the suggestion and objection has to be given we have opened our office from morning 10 to evening 7 where number of architects advocates chartered accountants have been put who are experts in this as a counselors where they can come and discuss and understand whether their land is affected or not affected if suggestion objection has to be given how it can be given all these services are available you can write to us in the email mswa.hsg@gmail.com or you can also send us the request on my personal email that is rsprabhu13@gmail.com or contact our office by calling and taking an appointment or discussing and to send somebody to your place that is <coughs> call our office landline number 4255-1414 or 4255-1432 so you contact this office where you will be assisted on the phone also we will give guidance on the website also we have started in a website that is affordable housing welfare organization of india and that that we have done avo.org that is a h w o i dot o r g you visit that website you look at which is the ward you are looking at so then we have 24 wards so 24 pages we have created so in each ward there are separate sheets which are available giving you the fsi and the you know land use so you can go there visit that and if you have any issues or any suggestion there is a block which we have made you can go to that block you can give your comments you can contact us we will help you and please do see that if you are getting affected please give your suggestion and also if any issues you contact us all these are going to be free advice we want to conduct n number of seminars at different wards 24 wards in each ward we are planning to have at least two to three seminars in the next one month we need your help any resident association any federation any local bodies any ngos who wants to arrange the program any gymkhana who wants to arrange the program they can contact us we will be happy to have the program and we will not charge a single money because we have enrolled lot of panel experts who would like to explain this new dc rule to the people at large thank you very much for coming and sparing the time thank you